hello to everyone that is watching and thank you um thanks for listening um before i get to carried away i just want to say thank you very much to roger from the expedition project um thanks for including us and um for giving me the opportunity to test my technological skills hope it doesn't go too badly um but um seriously you know i think it's a very cool idea this whole live stream thing um keeping us in touch with other people within our, our industry and especially now within these strange times um, for us to be able to share knowledge and ideas and basically to be working together. So yeah, thank you. Um, <clears throat> so just to give you a rough outline of what my talk is going to be about, I will start with myself, just a little bit of background um, and then the focus will be on the organization that I work for, the Amakala Foundation. So I'll cover a little bit of um, just general stuff. And then I'll be talking to you mostly about the programs that we usually run, um, and which I really enjoy being a part of. And then how this whole lockdown has affected our work and our programs, and so how things have had to change. And then, yeah, hopefully there'll be some time for questions. So yeah. Um, so, for those of you that do not know me, my name is Tammy, and I work for the Amakala Foundation, obviously. I am currently an environmental education coordinator, it's quite a mouthful, um, or just an environmental educator, that's a little bit easier. Um, but I have spent the last seven years um, shifting or kind of being torn between conservation, ecology, and then also the community or environmental education side. Um, <clears throat> so I've been quite lucky in that I've been able to combine both of my passions, which is wildlife and then also working with kids. So I'm very grateful for that. So that's just a little bit about me um, to get the, to the important stuff. So the Amakala Foundation, if you um, haven't heard of us, we are an NPO. Um, we're based on Amakala Game Reserve in the Eastern Cape. And we are run by a, um, a group or a board of trustees. It is, or last year was our, our 10th year, so it was our 10 year anniversary. So yeah, we've been going for quite a while. Um, yeah, just a little bit of background. I do believe there will be a follow up talk by um, two of the other trustees. So they'll talk to you in more detail about the bigger picture behind the foundation and um, also about our literacy projects. Excuse me. Um, then, so yeah, that's the foundation. Um, what do we do? So there's a couple of, we can call them pillars or sections that we are involved with. I'm not going to be speaking in detail about all of them, um, but I'll just name them and then I'll be focusing mostly on one of those. So. We are involved with literacy projects, um, community conservation projects, which is mostly supporting existing um, conservation projects on the reserve. Um, we do some skills development, and then mostly what I'll be focusing on is the environmental education side of things, um, as that's the section that I'm the most actively involved with. So, <clears throat> I'm quite excited to tell you guys about all the different programs that we run. But before I do that, I just want to stop and emphasize or point out the, the why it's important and why we do it or why I believe it is. Um, and so for to explain that, I just want to draw on two of my favorite quotes of all time. Um, I use them maybe too much. The first one is by David Suzuki. And he says something along the lines of, unless we are willing to encourage our children to to appreciate and reconnect with the natural world, we can't expect them to um, protect and care for it. That's the first one. And the second one, um, we will conserve only what we love, we'll love only what we understand, and we'll understand only what we are taught. I think those two quotes really summarize it for me. Um, the why we do what we do and why it is so important. Um, but for me on a personal level, I 
I feel like it's quite an important task that I have to address what is, in my opinion, quite a big problem nowadays, and that's this huge gap that we've created and that continues to grow between us and the natural world, um, the outdoors. And so when I was growing up, I remember climbing trees and playing in the sand and sleeping under the stars and trying to figure out which trees you could, or not trees, but which fruit you could eat and throw your friends with and discovering bugs. And that was great. And nowadays what I see is mostly kids on their cell phones, YouTube videos, TV, um, and not that those things are not fun or important because I, I also enjoy them, but in much smaller doses and um, yeah, much less in my childhood. So anyway, what I'm getting to is I think the big task that we have as people that do what I do is to make some kind of effort to bridge this gap. Um, and this doesn't only apply to kids, although that's what I mostly work with, but um, yeah, it applies to all of us. So um, I'm sure I'm not going to cover exactly all of our programs, but I'm hoping to cover some of my favorites and the ones that come to mind first. Um, I'll start with, there's a couple of um, environmental holidays which we celebrate and we do so by inviting our local um, kids from grade one to grade three. So these are um, for the days of a day, water day and world environment day. And so we invite them for a morning away from school, out of the classroom, um, and we teach them various, oh, based on different themes, there's lots of different lessons and activities. Um, so for example, um, healthy rivers would fall under water day, one of our themes, excuse me. Um, and so basically we try to um, design the program in such a way that they get to do things differently, you know, to the usual in the classroom. Um, it gets, it's more interactive, they get to use their hands and use their senses and have fun and go back with some cool memories. Um, those are my, probably yeah, my favorite days to plan. Um, and maybe just to give you one silly example for um, last year's Arbor Day, we had the theme of Albany thickets. And so we had different lessons about like, species within Albany Thicket that are important. And um, we, one of the activities was just to go for a walk um, within the reserve where there were no predators to go and identify and for the kids to see with their own eyes, like different um, adaptations that all the different trees have, you know, to thrive within their biome, pointing out different thorns and um, how they store and save water, etc basic things but just to see it with their own eyes and to figure it out themselves and then um, another thing that we do within that uh, well one of the species that we focus on is the dung beetle and also the african elephant etc but for the dung beetle one apart from having a story um, or actual lesson about it i um i have a bucket of dung that i've collected over the past um, or over the previous days and then I actually get them to roll the dung balls themselves so that always um, proves to be quite entertaining and although some of the girls might complain on the day they always go back telling their teachers how much how much fun they had um, and I think yeah I think those kind of memories are important anyway so th uh, that's just some of the the days which we celebrate every year so those are set programs and the schools that um, attend are mostly Sidbury Primary School, um, Lucy Biso, Alexandria, um, who am I leaving out? And sometimes Nanaha. So those are our closest schools and they're quite small, um, mostly farming schools. Um, <clears throat> then what else? Um, we run a nature club. Um, we do this in Grahamstown, working with the Rhodes University Community Engagement. Um, and also in Patterson, and that's just with our, with a few, actually like one or two um, local volunteers. Um, I think Nature Club is pretty self-explanatory, but one of the bigger 
um, or underlying long-term goals of this program is to identify individuals within those groups that have the potential to um, to complete their Fagasa Nature Enthusiasts Certificate, which is quite an important stepping stone towards achieving a guiding qualification, if that is something that they're interested in. Um, so that's Nature Club. <clears throat> what else? Um, one of my favorites, apart from the those big days which I get to plan, but one of the most um, fun and strenuous um, programs is we run an expedition with St. Andrews and Grahamstown and that's quite a big endeavor. It basically involves um, the boys being split into smaller groups and um, we have various different bases or points um, on the reserve and close to um, including like in Patterson and each group spends some time like 24 hours at a base and so they rotate and so they end up doing almost a week of this expedition um, and every base will have a different a different focus different theme different activities so for instance at one of the camps they sleep almost in a river line they get to learn to fish um, learn astronomy and then at another base they are in Patterson um, helping to build things helping to serve in the soup kitchen etc very different um, but to create an overall experience which is um, which has a big impact on them um, then there is a program called coaching for conservation or well, I think they've just changed the name to coaching conservation but we partner with them um, to facilitate a program which teaches conservation lessons and themes but uses soccer as a medium which is um i think quite a, a clever way um, especially working with the rural schools soccer is something that they can relate to and um so it's much easier to get them to relate to your rhino for instance when you're using soccer and of course it's very fun so that's coaching for conservation um oh, there's so many actually but um something i haven't mentioned i suppose is that all of our programs are unique and they cater for different ages different schools um so i've mentioned high school foundation phase we do also have a animal adventures program which is for our youngest kids um, and that is quite a simple and mostly fun program it would be something as simple as um teaching a five-year-old that a cheetah runs fast so getting them to do a relay race to practice running how to run or practicing how to run fast um yeah i think that is a good summary i don't want to talk um, too much or too long um the other programs that we have are not all necessarily set and ones that we do every year some of them are designed especially as we get the requests for might just be an outing so for some of the programs it is literally just a fun outing a game drive the focus is on providing some kids with their first ever wildlife encounter um, and hopefully planting some good seeds there all right so that's a bit of a summary of the programs we usually run now as you guys all know uh, we're stuck in lockdown and so um Basically, we've had to shift our focus from um, usually putting in the most time and energy into environmental education. And now we've had to focus more on, or we've chosen to focus more on the, the immediate needs of the community. Um, so what we've been up to since the start of lockdown is, well, it started with just something small and that was, um, it became clear that some community members couldn't um, find their own transport to town whether it be for um, pension grants or uh, medication um, so we just started assisting with that um, then what became more um, important was providing masks um, so we 
brainstormed our team and um, we eventually came up with or well, we went through various different designs i'll show you one in a sec um just for fun um but we 